Ever since the market bottomed in October, Abbott Labs has been on a roll. A few months ago, everyone was worried about these GLP-1 diabetes drugs eating into their diabetes device business. But now the company's pointing out their blood sugar monitors can be used as companions to the GLPs. And that's just one reason why the stock's been on fire. Earlier today, we spoke to Robert Forties, the chairman and CEO of Abbott Labs, about his company's presentation and the course that he has chartered for Abbott. Take a look. Robert, it's been a while since we've talked, obviously, post-COVID. And I need to ask you, what is going on now at Abbott? What do you look like? Because it was obscured by COVID. Oh, well, we're very excited uh, about 2024. Uh, but, yeah, I think during COVID, we had two objectives. Um, let's help society with our testing. I don't think there's a company that did more than what we did on the, on the diagnostic Global side. Play. But then let's take advantage and let's grow the company. Let's make it stronger. Uh, so we did about 20 billion of revenue during that COVID period, three, three and a half years. We took a portion of it. We started new R&D programs. We accelerated existing programs. We made investments in clinical people in the field, investments in manufacturing. So if you look at Abbott without the COVID for the first nine months of the year, we grew double digits. And you think about where we were before COVID, our growth formula was around seven to eight percent. Right. So we beat and raised every quarter last year. OK. And what ended up clouding that a little bit is you had eight billion of covid revenue come down to about one right. and a half billion. Right. But so I'm very excited about the momentum we have in the core business. Uh, I said we would see that momentum in Q4. We'll report in a couple of weeks. Uh, and I see that momentum going into 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 20, uh, 2024. I think that the, the key thing for us during that period was how do how do the owners of the company, our shareholders actually benefit right. in what we were doing? So if you look at what we did between 2021 and 2023, we returned $17 billion to our shareholders in terms of dividends, which is an important part of our identity, and, and, and share of buybacks, and invested in the business. So they, you know, they saw the benefits in the short term with the return we gave them, and they're going to continue to see that with an accelerated growth rate. So we're really excited, and I think the market's going to see in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks, we'll realize what we what, what, what we what we've set up for 2024. Well, a little preview is is that you're double digit, but it's all business lines are double digit. This is not one product driving things. Yeah, correct. In Q3, we saw all of our four segments: diagnostics, medical devices, nutrition, and established pharmaceuticals all grow double digits. You mentioned nutrition. You had been uh, kind of lagged for a while because of some issues that are now passed. You're the leader again. Yeah, that we had that we had our recall back in 2022. That was a tough time for parents uh, in this country. Uh, our focus was entirely let's get product back on shelf. I'm not going to debate what happened, what didn't happen. But you saw our market share now is actually back, almost back, probably like 95 percent where we're at. And I think that speaks to the trust that hospitals and healthcare providers and consumers have with the company and, and with what we do. So yeah, so that's that's somewhat behind us. We are investing in more manufacturing capacity. We made commitments to build inventory levels so that we never have that again. Now, it's not like COVID went away. I mean, I know I still test. I've got a vending machine at the New York Stock Exchange. I use your product. Uh, so there's still some income coming from it, but it doesn't obscure the greatness anymore. Yeah, I think I think as we've gone, I think Q4, you'll see more of an endemic state okay. of COVID. Uh, yeah, there were more te there was more cases, but I think it'll be endemic. We will have earnings that will come from it, but it won't be at that level that it was before clouding Good. it. And it'll just be part of our business. Well, one of the things that people are going to understand is you've got a giant cardiovascular business and people don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the cardiovascular business, I mean, we are leaders. We, we participate in large growth segments and we've got leadership positions. So cardiac rhythm management, uh, heart failure, uh, structural heart, electrophysiology, coronary, peripheral vascular. So we've really assembled back in the acquisition in 2017 with St. Jude, we've really assembled a portfolio of market leading technologies here and we've invested in them. So we've got a series of new products coming out in the pipeline. Uh, we've got a, 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 a new device for the treatment of trichotomy. Cuspid uh, regurgitation, mm -hmm. you know, out, you know, surgery is too risky leaky to do that. Valve. Yeah, leaky heart valve. So surgery is too risky. There's no real pharmaceutical treatments for that. So this is now in front of the FDA that we reported data last year. It's great, great uh, treatment option. So, but across all the areas in cardiovascular, we've got strong pipelines. Now, uh, your diabetes franchise, second none around the world. Uh, the numbers. Uh, it, again, 1.4 billion recently, and it, you're up. What well, the, I, it was up 28 percent before. I mean, the, problem, the numbers just keep growing and growing. Why is it so much stronger than everybody else in the industry? 
Well, well, first of all, we took a view of looking at it as a mass market, right? So to do that, you have to, one, build a product that's consumer friendly, check. Um, we have to uh, build the scale, and you know Abbott's scale, the manufacturing, the global scale. So we're able to kind of really go. And then we took a different pricing strategy. We said if we're going to make this mass market, then we have to price it as mass market. And I think that's what's happened is it's really uh, had, uh, it's moved the technology from a niche population to a much larger population. We're actually looking now at using the platform that we built to target people that we usually don't target, healthcare going to target people that are healthy, that want to stay healthy. So we launched a version of Libre called Lingo. Okay, we've launched it in the UK, and it's really looking at how do people that don't have diabetes, but want to understand their glucose level, want to understand their metabolics, want to understand what's the impact of food and my mood and my health and my overall good health. So we launched that in the, in the in UK. The feedback has been great. And we're going to bring that wow. to the US here. We're going to bring it to the US I here also. I have no idea that you're yeah. working on That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you straighten out for people, the GLP. One, emotion versus facts versus data. Your stock got crushed by this. But in fact, you guys coexist, and the size of the actual markets you treat versus how many people you take GLP, yeah. it's not going to damage anything. Yeah, listen, hey, great drugs, uh, great, great biology, but I'd say what we, sh what we showed, we released two data sets. We're going to release some more data set this year, but we actually showed a complementary relationship between the device and the drugs. So we showed that, we, we, showed, we, showed, us we showed users using Libre, we showed users just using GLP, and then we showed users using both. And that group that was using both were using more Libre, and we're being more adherent to their GLP-1. So this notion that it'll slow our growth, it's it actually, it's actually moderately positive it was for us. It's so wrong, which is why yeah. the stock took off. Yeah. People finally understood your relationship and recognized it's a win. Yeah. It's a win for Abbott, win for the patients. Robert Ford, Chairman and CEO of Abbott Labs. Robert, it's been a while since I've seen you. Thank you so much for coming back on May. Very good seeing you, too. Thank you. I've learned so much about the latest developments in the healthcare space from all the CEOs that have come on the show during my two days out here. And I want to thank them all for their time. I'd like to say there's always a bull market somewhere. I promise I'll just for you right here on Mad Money. I'm Jim Cramer. See you tomorrow. Last call starts now.